And good morning, everyone. It is so delightful to see everybody that is here today, from the youth that are here, to our wisdom people that are here, to our visitors which are here in person this day. I'm Pastor Chris Gorton, and so we welcome you to Memorial United Church of Christ and know that whoever you are and wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here today. And that includes all of you at home, whether you're joining us on YouTube or joining us Zoom, we welcome you into this expanded sanctuary this day, whether you are near or far. And if you haven't noticed, if you took a glance at the e-news, there is a lot happening in the life of Memorial United Church of Christ. I was wondering, did anybody have announcements they would like to share this day? Rebecca. You can push that, yeah. Thank you. I'm already tall. So I have two announcements. Um, first one, First Friday Fellowship is resuming on October 7th, so it's a Friday. Um, we'll be meeting here at Memorial in the youth room at 11.30, bring your own lunch. And this is what's really exciting, is we're having um, our very own Hattie Apser, known professionally as Hattie McLean, will be giving us a presentation entitled The Wonders of Physics. So Hattie is going to cover everything from rocks and minerals under our feet to the clouds flying high above our head. She'll talk about all things science and bring along some of her favorite physics, uh, her demonstrations that she does from UW-Madison's physics department. And many of you also know that she was a meteorologist for Channel 3. So this is really exciting. And also she's going to be making... Um, ice cream using liquid nitrogen. So if you missed the VBS um, science experiment, she's going to be doing that for us adults. So again, that is Friday, October 7th at 1130. The other announcement is crop walk for hunger. How many people here have done the crop walk? Crop walk is fun. It's something that I know my family and my kids, we really look forward to doing that. That is going to be Sunday, October 16th, where we will be gathering at First Congregational UCC downtown. That will be at 1 o'clock. And we'll be having a walk with other members of the community um, to walk in solidarity for those facing hardship with uh, poverty and hunger. So this is something that Madison area has been doing. It's done all over the nation, but Madison has been doing this um, for the last 38 years. And we've been able to raise during that time $1.5 million. 
So if you want to take part in this, um, either by donating or joining us in the walk, you can sign up out there in the niche, you just sign up sheet. You could also go online to the Madison Crop Walk site and you can sign up. Our team name is Memorial UCC, so it's pretty simple. So I invite everyone to, to join us just to come out and gather. It's a nice walk. It's usually just a great sunny day walking through downtown Madison. And it's also just fun for the kids to get out um, if you have trouble getting your kids to stop playing things like Minecraft um, <laughs> that, or watching anime. Um, you can have them come out and join you. Thank you, Rebecca. Other announcements today? Kel oh, come on in. You come on up and then Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, you have to get quicker here. Come on up. And I don't know if you, if you could use either the microphone at the pulpit or we also have a handheld you may use. Joyce? Well, the, the, uh, I'm Joyce. And um, I'm, uh, I was going to make this joke about uh, you guys recognizing me, you know. Uh, <laughs> So uh, anyway, <laughs> but uh, uh, this this week uh, on the twenty on Sunday the twenty fifth after church uh, we will have what we call our harvest festival, and it's the end of the of uh, the growing season for the the gardens. That garden that we have now that is now located at uh, uh, Arbor Covenant Church. It started some years ago in the early 80s, late mm, 80s actually, mm. with a group of my daycare kids that they called the Garden of Eden. <laughs> and, uh, so, and we often had a harvest dinner after that, and so I tried to honor that by continuing to have it. So you're all welcome. Mm. And it was in your it, it, newsletter, yep. and thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, and thank you too. And for those of you that either have been on your um, summer sabbatical from church and doing some delightful traveling, which we can do nowadays, or if you're new or newish to Memorial United Church of Christ, we and Arbor Covenant Church have a long history of working together with the Good Neighbors Personal Essentials Pantry. And the past few years, we have been doing more collaborations, which includes the community garden. And thank you for that delightful invitation to the Harvest Fest. And we are worshiping together as well. So introduce yourselves to each other, whether however, whatever brought you here today, if you see someone you do not know, say hi, introduce yourselves. This is how we do community. And Kelly. There has been some interest in bike riding, and so I wanted to let everybody know of a fun night bike ride event coming up next Friday evening. It's the Pick Me Up at the Border ride. Uh, it starts at race day events, um, and it's a fundraiser for Bike Fitchburg, but, and it's $15, I believe, to enter. Um, you don't have to go all the way to the border. You can turn around kind of any time, but one option is riding down to Belleville and then returning. And yes. what border? Uh, the Illinois border. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's at it's, night, folks. Yeah. It Just is. Saying. Yeah. It's Just a asking. night ride along the Badger State Trail, and they go, some people go all the way to the border, and it goes till like 5 a.m. the next morning so I, I did the short ride last year and it was lovely you need a helmet and you need a bike light and because you will be on a state trail you'd also need a state trail pass okay thank you that is actually something I've always wanted to do so I will maybe have to since I spoke that out loud do at least a little bit of it right give it a shot night bike riding if you're interested in joining, one, um, Bike to the Border, you can find online, but you can also talk to Kelly and Bill Jetzer for more information. Any other announcements? I have two quick ones. One, those of you that ordered from Just Bakery, they did pop in here today. There are pickups for you with your names on them in the fellowship hall. And I have to keep it quiet so no one takes your ice cream treats, but the ice cream treats are in the freezer. 
So if you ordered from Just Bakery, um, don't forget your goodies today. Because we do have confirmation tonight, and just saying. <laughs> Danger there. And with confirmation, what I want to offer you to do as you are here in worship today and or um, as we do fellowship, the last two weeks we have been doing six-word responses to what is church. And we developed a beautiful word cloud that has community and relationships and love and God and Jesus and spirit and outreach and more on it. We're going to take that six-word blessing idea, and some of you have already responded. In the e-nos, there is an electronic version, but there is also a hard copy of the blessing outline in your bulletin. If you would like to fill that out today and leave it on the communion table after worship, I will be sharing those with the confirmation class tonight. And I just think it's a delightful way for us to do this journey together over time. If you're at home on YouTube or Zoom, again, please go to our e-news and you will find the link to the blessing that you form that you can do online and send the youth some encouragement and the teachers for the year ahead. So um, we have three youth that will be doing confirmation. You will hear more about it during the sermon. With that, I invite you to take a deep breath. And to listen to the words of the Spirit, Feel, fill your heart this day as the choir calls us into sacred space. Please rise and join with us in the call to worship. O oh God, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Ask the animals and they will teach you. The birds of the air and they will tell you. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare you. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. The hand of God has done this. In God's hand is the life of every little thing and the breath of every human being. Please join in the opening prayer. Holy wisdom, we see the destruction in the world around us and hear the cries of our fellow humans and creatures affected by climate change. We call to you, guide us, teach us, inspire us, forgive us, and you say, I have been your guide and teacher. The whole cosmos bears witness to my wisdom, and creation itself is the revelation of my love. 
turn to the plants and the animals, the sea and the sky. They will show you my wisdom. And so we say, open our hearts and minds to all the wisdom of creation as we gather in worship today. Amen. The first Bible reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 8 through 18 through chapter 9, verses 1. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from the far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn and dismay what has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. Amen. Oh, 
Thank you, choir. The second reading is from Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an account of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now, now that my master is taking my position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of oil, olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little faithful is, is also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Thus ends our readings. May we be blessed with understanding. All of our young ones, children, youth, and adults to join me up front. Join me with a friend that we have here today. So I have a special friend up here. You probably have seen her many times here at church. She has helped out with Sunday school before. She's done the children's message before. And um, she's also helped out with a lot of the craft projects that we've done here at, at church. And she's also the wife of Farmer John. <laughs> so if you know Farmer John, that's Mrs. Farmer John. <laughs> so today, Cindy is going to talk to us about the environment. Hi, kids and everybody. I get to be here with Rebecca because she and I are both on... Um, a group or in a group here at church called the Green Team. And I know that out here there are more Green Team members. I'm going to ask them to just stand for a second and wave to the kids. And all of you um, should know that the Green Team kind of, um, we hang out and try to make sure that we're taking good care of the earth. And, um, you know, we're the, we're the people who... Uh, about a year ago, maybe, maybe almost a year and a half, handed out some uh, boxes of stuff like this that was, this is shampoo. You probably think this is for washing your face, but it's actually shampoo. We also handed out some of these. Um, this is laundry detergent without all the liquid, just the soap. And we handed out sunflower seeds, and we planted the Three Sisters Garden. So the green team does everything we can to help take care of the earth. And um, today, I'm going to read a little book to you. Oh, you know what I forgot to ask? I think that lots of you are studying about the earth. The, I think there's lots of classes at school or things you've seen on TV about the earth. And so I wanted to, hang on one second, honey. I wanted to say that the green team 
well, we're all grown-ups, and we're not really in classes to study stuff, so when you find out something important that we need to know about caring for the earth, Miss Rebecca is the one, or me, or any grown-ups, if you can tell us what you've learned, that would be very helpful. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, but I'll, I'll let, hear what your comment was in a second. So one of the things I love are neat books. And I found this book. It's got kind of a lot of stuff written in it, but it's called C is for Carbon Footprint. Now I'll just read it like this. And <laughs> yep. Um, I love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to do this this way. First, I'm going to show pictures. Did I go slow enough so you can see? All right, let me read you. It's an ABC's book. It's kind of long, so I promise we're not going to go all the way to the letter Z. Action is the one for the letter A. This book holds actions that you can take to be a better environmentalist, which is a big word for taking care of where we live. We only have one earth, and everyone should treat her well. Stand up for the earth by making some of the changes suggested in these pages. Share what you learn with your friends. We can all make a big difference. And this is the, the picture about the letter A. Way to go, dear. <laughs> I love it. All right, do you see this, everybody? All right, the next one, I'm going to show you this picture. Well, oh, sorry, people. I missed it. I know you want to see the pictures out there. All right, the next picture is this pyramid thing. And many, many organizations or ideas come with kind of a pyramid of how you should do things. And this is called a buyer, buyerarchy. And all of us are buyers, right? It's like a hierarchy, exactly. And this hierarchy is just brilliant. I had never seen this idea. The hierarchy of needs is a diagram that you follow before you buy something new. When there's something you need that you don't already have, you start at the bottom of the pyramid and you work your way up. So if I need something new, first step is just use what you have. Maybe what I have is a little old, but it still works. The second step, borrow from somebody. What if you needed a tool to trim some trees and your neighbor had the same one? If they were your buddy, you could share that. The third, third one is a really cool one. You could swap. What if somebody in your family is a certain size shoes and somebody in another family is another size and you need a pair for a fancy event? You could swap and then you'd have something new. The next step of being really a good caregiver for the earth is go to the thrift stores. Holy cow, they have got amazing stuff. I won't even get go off on that. The next one is, the next one is, could you make it yourself? Maybe some stuff you need, you could make. And then the last step would be go to a store and buy it. So you see how it kind of shows you the, the biggest, best thing is at the bottom and going all the way up to actually having to go shopping. So it's kind of smart. It's an idea that I had never, ever heard. OK, the C in this ABC's book is carbon footprint. And your carbon footprint is how much carbon dioxide, also called CO2, there's a lot of chemistry here, you produce by living on this earth. Carbon dioxide is a, a gas that we breathe out of our lungs, 
but it's also the smoke that comes from cars and factories. Everything we do, from how we tra oh, you, it, that's exactly right. Everything we do, from how we travel to what we eat, adds to our carbon footprint. And you know what? Oh my goodness, Rebecca, I almost forgot. It's Carbon Footprint Day at Memorial. So here's the picture for Carbon Footprint. And wait till you see what else is in this little basket. Alrighty, I'm just having to uh, give that to Rebecca and some to here. I want every kiddo to take one of these and pass it on. Or actually, why don't you take two? Take two because we have tons. Take a couple. You got two or three. Just take a bunch. All right, here's what I need you to do. These cute little footprints, which thank you, Rebecca. She cut them all out and I didn't have to. <laughs> These little carbon footprints have a website on them. And this is a website that um, our green team member, Jackie, did a bunch of research. And this is the one that's the most usable and seems to be the most accurate, apparently. And it is a place for you to go on the computer sometime and check out your carbon footprint. And what I need the kids to do, uh, if, they're, if they're willing, are you guys willing to um, each give a carbon footprint to the grown-ups you came with? and then come back and get some more carbon footprints to give to the other adults in the room? Are you willing to be the hander-outers of carbon footprints? Go for it. Just run to your mom and dad, give them one, your grandma and grandpa, if that's who you came with. Um, did you, will you give some to anybody? Oh, the choir. There's a whole bunch of people over there. Somebody go to the choir. Here, take a bunch and hand those out. All right, grown-ups, if you don't have a carbon footprint, raise your hand. <laughs> Indy, you're a good sport. <laughs> yeah, because you're the grown-up in his family. And then we'll come back and, and uh, gather right here for just another minute, and then I'll let you guys go. <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you guys are wonderful. Thank you. I had no idea how I was going to get these to everybody, and then I thought, well, the kids could do that. How did you remember? I know. Can you believe I almost forgot? It's a good thing I was reading that book about carbon footprints. All righty, here's what, what our plan for Memorial is. You take this little darling home with you, or two of them, or if there are six people in your family, you can have six of them. And sometime in the next month, we ask you to go online and check out your carbon footprint, just as a way of learning how we impact the earth. Then you can put your name on the back and bring it back. Now, what we plan to do is this little basket will be out in the um, niche out there. And when you bring your carbon footprint back, you could give it to me, or you could give it to Rebecca. And we're going to make a path of carbon footprints with these. When they come back, we're going to put them on the wall, walking up and down the wall. And um, some of you will go, oh my gosh, I hate computers. I don't want to do this. That's fine. But we'd love to have as many of you try it as you could. I had never looked up my carbon footprint before. And I went, well, how do you like that? All righty. Now, did we remember everything, Rebecca? Oh, you want a different color? And what were you going to say? Do you remember, or did I make you forget, honey? Yes, they do. Yes, and and we we're going to try to be good caregivers of the earth. And I just want to say, I know that sometimes you might be thinking, this is just one more thing I have to do. 
this is something like Cindy said, you know, take the next month or so to check it out. And if you see that you have a pretty big carbon footprint, you know, we encourage you to try to take care of those things. Um, but we also know realistically you have a lot going on in your life. So this might be something that you put on the fridge and you might not get to right away. And that's okay. This is just for you to just have uh, an idea of this is the impact I'm making right now. Um, and if anyone is curious about the, because it's not just humans, animals also have a carbon paw print. And you can also check that out. There's some information over by the green team, uh, the bulletin board over there. So check that out. There's some copies out there to check out, um, you know, you, if you have a cat or a dog or a lizard, or I think you guys have some kind of wonky animals at your house too. So <laughs> check it out and see the kind of impact that uh, your, your furry friends are, are doing. And just so all of you know, the whole rest of this book contains ideas for reducing carbon footprints. So I will be returning in about a month to read some more of the book to you. And just again, I know that we, you might be thinking, oh, they're saying that we need, you know, the adults are saying we need their help and blah, blah, blah. But really, we do. You guys are in school. You guys are learning a lot more than we are right now with some of the things on the environment. I know Indy's, it was talking about a class he had last year that talked about environmental racism. And uh, he was able to educate me on a lot of stuff that I'm using to then help put together something for the adults later on this year. So what you guys are learning is is seriously really helpful for us so let us know if there's something interesting that you learned in school or send me an email with that information and um, also you guys are also welcome to be on this committee because we need your voices as well because again you guys know more about what's going on I think than some of us yeah. so I'm going to read a prayer before we go out and then I need um, two people to help with the, the uh, lantern. Is there any takers who would like to do? Oh, Ellie and Ellie. Okay, you guys can help light that then. Okay. okay do you want a light or do you want to light it? I want, I want to carry it. You want to carry it? So thank you, Elliot, as we take the light of Jesus Christ, the light of our congregation, and have a prayer before Lily helps lead us out. As we go forth in our ever-widening circle and ever-changing universe, continue to bless us, dear God, as we do your work on this beautiful blue boat home. Amen. And now Lily is going to bring us out. Now, if you were in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, you can head out those side doors there and go over to the youth room for class. And then everyone else can follow Lily. So I'm pausing for a moment because when I reflected on the sermon 72 hours ago, I have learned like a lot about carbon footprints since then. So the sermon's already dated, but that's what's cool about this, right? I will point those things out as we go along. As we come together, we've been taking a moment, Estacio, just pausing intentionally to know that we are here in the presence of the divine and in the presence of each other, let us take a moment to purposely center ourselves on the good news, the balm 
that God places before us this day. Amen. So later today, three confirmation students, Evan Fritz, Noah Estrella, and Sophia Dyer, and four adults, Jim McMillan, Kelly and Bill Jetzer, and myself, will be getting together for the first of our five Bible boot camp sessions, a field guide to your Bible. If you're curious about what a field guide to your Bible might be like, I'll invite you to come to either of the two Bible studies we have each Wednesday. The Wednesday morning session is held here in person in the library from 8 to 9. And then the evening Bible study is fully on Zoom for an hour starting at 6.30 p.m. So you can pop, up, pop in at either spot. You can find the link to the evening Bible study in the e-news or contact the church office. And let me tell you, for either Bible study, no experience is necessary. One of the questions we dug into during the Bible study this past Wednesday morning was in response to someone asking how often the phrase, Balm of Gilead, appears in Scripture. And did you know there's an app for that? <laughs> it is called the Blue Letter Bible. A quick search and we discovered the word balm is in the Bible six times and only in the text of the Hebrew Bible. Living in our current global distribution system, it was interesting to read in Genesis 37:25. So this is Genesis. Then they, Joseph's brothers, sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, carrying gum, balm, resin, on their way to carry it down to Egypt. This is documentation of trade between Gilead and Egypt, embedded in the oral traditions of our ancestors. Now, one of the exciting new books I added to my library this year was the Eco Bible, an ecological commentary on Genesis and Exodus by Rabbi Yonatan Nero and Rabbi Leo D. As they reflected on this verse in Genesis, they wrote, while some consider globalization a recent phenomena, the trade of luxury goods between peoples goes back thousands of years this verse attests to it. It was about 1,500 years ago, after this, or 1,500 years after this caravan to the north and south of Israel, the silk trade route developed. Yet in recent years, the amount of global trade has increased tenfold to about $20 trillion per year. The ecological footprint of the caravan people and the camels bearing gum, balm, and lotus and, I will add Joseph, to Egypt was minimal. Yet the footprint of trade today is tremendous. It's important that I pause here for a moment and point out the irony embedded in the retelling of Joseph's brothers, call me sitting down to eat, like it was an ordinary, every, everything, everyday activity to do. Because the balm of Gilead appears immediately, like right after they had thrown their 17-year-old brother into a pit to die. And then they sat down to eat, like nothing had happened. A caravan of sellers stops by. Is there a balm, any healing relief to be had in the world? As the story in Genesis tells us, not for Joseph, not at that time at least. In the span of just four verses, the brothers had schemed and traded their brother to the Ishmaelites. Human trafficking is an ancient 
sin. Is there a balm, any healing relief anywhere? For we are all so wounded. Listening to God's word, Jesus provokes more questions than answers. Scholars generally consider this parable in Luke the most difficult to decipher. Then there are Jeremiah's words which elicit a visceral response. Hear the cry of my people. The harvest has ended. We are not saved. Is there no balm? Is life all for naught? This deep need for healing is humanity's constant communal condition. And, and it is the spirit which lives within us that is the balm. If Jesus were to step into our sanctuary today, he might look at us like he looked at the disciples and tell us this parable. There was once a rich country which had companies which spewed noxious gases into the air. Other industries discharged plastics into local waters. Microplastics proliferated. Some corporations devastated the land. What dishonest wealth did the people in that country gain? For that country is us. What have we been taking truly from the world. Listen to these numbers. The Nature Conservancy states that the average carbon footprint, right? The average carbon footprint for a person in the United States is 16 tons, one of the highest rates in the world. Globally, the average footprint is closer to four tons. To have the best chance to have a chance of avoiding a 2% 2 degree Celsius rise in global temperature, the average global carbon footprint per year needs to drop to, any guesses? Under two tons, under two tons globally by 2050. That is a big drop in under 30 years. Living in our consumer-driven, buy more, that buyer hierarchy that Cindy had was very timely, one of the things I learned today. In our consumer-driven, buy more, pay less lives, we have truly been taking from the world, often without even realizing it. For example, and I need that triangle pyramid again, I'm going to have to read it after church. For example, what I am wearing this morning, I cannot tell you where each item was made, the materials ethically sourced. I do not know whether the people who made the clothes work in a safe setting. I have researched the companies and learned they support actions such as a compassion fund and services for women who have been trafficked. The company from where I purchased my shoes well, they intentionally focus on inclusivity and sustainable practices. This all looks good online, but what does it mean in practice? It means I need to stop and look at that pyramid. But as, manager, as the manager in Jesus' parable asked each person, what do you owe? We need to ask ourselves, what do we owe? What do I, what do we owe to others for the lives, the material goods, and land shrewdly, purposely, intentionally, and sometimes unwittingly? We have taken over the past, well, pick your own timeline, right? But let's say the past 600 years since the beginning of colonialism, or 500 years since the first ship brought in peoples from Africa to Jamestown, Virginia, or pick your timeline for the genocide in the Americas. Whatever starting point you prefer to use, we know the list is long. 
But this is where we become the balm. Merriam-Webster defines balm of Gilead as something that soothes, relieves, or heals. We, we need to be that balm, love in action, salvation for the world coming through the spirit, which lives in us via the tools at our disposal. Now that list of tools can be pretty long too, but a few of them that we gathered when we were doing our six word, what is church word cloud the last few weeks, some of our tools are community. Look around. This is who we are. And compassion and storytelling. These are just a few of the ways we can help the spirit change the world. This is the hope of the world. We are that hope. You are. You are that hope, that balm of healing for our community. We, our very lives, are acts of the living God. We are the people of the story. We have taken and profited and now a great turning. I listened to Jeff's song this morning. A great turning is urgently needed for the health of the earth and the survival of humanity. We cannot serve both God and wealth. We owe humanity. We owe the earth, the biosphere. We owe it to God's creation to speak up, to reach out, to be a harvest of healing, compassionate, nurturing. There is balm left, and it is us. We are balm. May it be so. our space of prayer, I'll make a comment about some of the blankets that you see around the sanctuary. For those new to the congregation, just so you know, these are prayer shawls that people in the life of the church have made. And if you ever have a day where you just need a little more comfort or are a little cold, feel free to grab one and put it around. It's not saving a spot in the sanctuary or anything. It's a prayer a prayer to wrap around yourself. Um, and if you need one, let me know. We have prayer shawls, and they are soft. As we come into this time of prayer, I will ask, if you don't mind, for one of the ushers to pass the handheld microphone around, and then we'll make sure you get it back. Those of you that have prayers in this space today, um, if you could use this microphone, please, so our friends at home can hear your prayer as well. Those of you at home, if you want to send in a prayer in the chat on Zoom, um, please do so or send a text to my phone, and we will include you in our community prayer this day. And I'm sorry, who had a prayer this morning? I saw it. Oh, yes, Mary Kay. Yeah, hi. Um, so just a prayer for my husband to, um, to help him. Um, think a little more clearly and act a little more rationally as we go forward with the things we need to do in yeah. particular um, offering our building for sale to mm -hmm. you know complete um, to complete our financial life and stuff so um, just prayers for him to to see things more clearly I guess is my yeah. my wish so. Yeah, prayers for healing, because life transitions are challenging. So, yes, thanks, Mary Kay. So many prayers for Steve this day. And Linda. Um, just an update on my mother that I've been asking for prayers for. She did uh, come back to her retirement community for, 
from the hospital, unfortunately, there's not a treatment for the aspiration pneumonia. That um, so she's been placed in hospice care at the community, and I, I, my husband and I did travel to see her um, this past week. So just prayers that um, she won't be in a lot of pain or fear, and that God's timing will work for us to be there at the right time. Thank you for sharing the update, Linda. I know it is hard. So prayers for your mom at this time of transition again and for you and your husband and Mike and Marcy and for the girls as well. We share prayers and journey with you. Other prayers in the sanctuary this day? Some? Oh. Just a prayer of, for peace and healing for my brother and his family upon the death of our sister-in-law and gratitude for the wonderful family they both were able to develop and a legacy mm -hmm. resulting from her life. Mm. What a great tribute, Jean, Jim, speaking of life's legacies. So thank you for that and blessings on your own healing in Jan's as well. I have a text prayer from Jordan this day. Um, oh, so it's a prayer for Jeffrey, who is one of Logan's first grade classmates who had emergency brain surgery on Saturday. So for a first grader who in their family who is going through a challenging time, and for Logan and all of his classmates and teacher as well, um, Prayers for healing and support along the way. I also have a prayer from Rick Orton this day. Prayer for Heidi for her continued and successful healing. So Rick and Karen this day for your friend or family member, Heidi. Um, may healing and balm continue. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, Art. Yeah. Um, last night we went to a rally uh, for um, a young woman uh, who is uh, a group of Native American people in different uh, um, are, are doing a walk to Washington D.C. for her father, Leonard Peltier. She has never seen or really met her father. Uh, because he was incarcerated before she was born. Mm -hmm. And he's serving two life consecutive terms for something that he didn't do. Mm -hmm. And so we need prayers for those walkers mm -hmm. that are going to Washington, D.C. to um, be heard. Yeah, thank you. Speaking about stories and the importance of sharing stories, I appreciate you sharing that so that we can hear and learn and hold in prayer the people walking to Washington, D.C. for an unjust situation of incarceration. So thank you for that. I also, um, oh, I have a prayers of joy to share with everyone. Um, I have a text prayer, prayers of joy for our neighbors that have been sharing the parking lot with us the last few weeks as they have found a better living situation. For, so for those of you, if you have any questions or um, have been helping with this process, um, <laughs> affordable housing in Fitchburg is challenging and particularly for families. So prayers for that blessing. And thank you for being the church and being a part of this family's next step. So, thank you. And if I could ask for the handheld to come back to Jill. Let us continue in that spirit of prayer this day. Holy wisdom, we rejoice in the signs of your power in evolutionary creation and the unfolding cosmos. From the stardust of the galaxies to the plankton of the sea, from the oasis in the desert to the crowded city, all creation is infused with your power. Make us mindful of the inspiration that infuses all creation. Pain bearer, we hear the cries of creation and our brothers and sisters. 
and siblings, human and every other kind the world over, climate refugees, species in danger of extinction, victims of war and economic injustice. Extend the balm of your healing power, we pray. And life giver, we pray that your wisdom revealed in all your works may inspire us to live in right relation with earth, our mother and all her creatures and the whole human family May the harmony of creation be a model for our relationships with our neighbors near and far, teaching us that we are not self-sufficient, but only thrive through a constant exchange of energy and elements, love and language in the web of life. O great teacher, we give you thanks for the wisdom of indigenous peoples and the unique insights of the many expressions of faith and spiritual practice in the human family. Wherever there has been hatred, oppression, and exploitation, bring truth-telling, reconciliation, and respectful communion. Help us always to use our talents and resources to serve the good of all with renewed commitment as we listen again to the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Intentionality is a really important part of our faith community. And one of the things that we have been intentionally doing at Memorial is to offer a mission moment on the third Sunday of each month. So I'm going to invite Donna Malali to come up to the front, if you would. And as she comes up here, we've been talking a lot about how we um, care for the earth and how we can be balm. There is that outreach of connecting with others but there's also in-reach here at Memorial and how we provide balm and healing for each other. You have heard pray prayers for healing, prayers of joy and celebration, and Donna is going to talk about our card ministry and how that all intersects. All right, today I'm going to talk to you about a mission of the church that you're a member of. You may not realize it, but you are all members of the card ministry. Every time you send a card to somebody, that's part of the ministry. That card ministry has been around for a long time. I've been the recipient of a number of cards which have encouraged me at times when I felt I needed prayer. <clears throat> you know, we like to get mail not junk mail and not the bills, but it is so much fun to go to the mailbox and find a card. And just a simple card that just says, I'm thinking about you or something like that. It, it doesn't take a lot of effort to do it. So, um, you know, there are many opportunities for you to know who would benefit from a card you can go on the Memorial Facebook page and you can uh, see the prayer requests there. You might have a family member that's struggling with something or you might know somebody that's just having a bad day and you might want to just send a card and say, hi, I'm thinking about you. Or maybe you just want to tell a friend, you know, I appreciate your friendship. So every morning, every Sunday morning at church, we just finished it. We have the prayer request time. And I've heard many heartfelt prayers during the prayer request time. And I know I've done this. You might have done it too. I've thought, wow, that really touches my heart. I think I'll send them a card. And then I get home and I forget about it. I don't have the address 
or I don't have a card, or any number of excuses, and so the card doesn't get sent. So at Memorial, we've kind of changed the card sending concept to make it really easy for you to send a card. If you'll notice out in the narthex, there is a table with all kinds of cards on their little baskets of get well cards, thinking of you cards, special occasion cards. We try to put a variety of things for whatever card you might need, birthday card, anniversary card. So we're making it really easy by saying, um, you, don't, you don't even have to mail it. What you can do is you can look at the card, take an appropriate card, write your message in the card, put it in the envelope, write the name of the person that you want to get the card on the envelope, but don't worry if you don't have the address, don't worry about postage, we'll do that for you. You place the card in the outgoing basket, and now that um, we're getting a little bit back to normal and COVID's over, <laughs> we're going to check the, uh, the card basket again because during the pandemic, the um, cards in person being picked up here was on hold and you had to do it from home with your own cards. So, and I know that many, many people sent cards during the pandemic to people um, and, and that's been, it's been gratifying for me to hear from various people how much a card has meant to them. So it was really exciting when Pastor Chris contacted me and said, I found a card in the outgoing basket. What should we do with it? <laughs> so I said, mail it. <laughs> <laughs> so that card, I'm, I'm not sure how long it's been, it was in there, but that mailed. card got, did yeah. get mailed. Mm -hmm. So we will be checking that basket now on a more regular basis. I also brought some uh, fresh cards today, some thinking mm -hmm. of you, some get well, some sympathy cards. And um, so it might seem like